Why haven't you guys gotten on TikTok? <laughs> I can't do it, man. <laughs> Seriously, what would that look like, me trying to do something like that? Yeah. Special episode of 2OT. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagsama sa amin. Carlo Pamintuan and Magum or John. We will be welcoming members of the TNT Katropa, the Tropang Texters from a couple of years back. Isa-isa natin silang isasama dito sa ating Facebook Live. Starting with, I believe we have our first guest joining us. Parang Royal Rumble eh, no? Papasok lang yung mga entrance. I think Harvey hey. Jerry is about to join us. Hey, Harv. How are you doing? Hello. The Magoo. Of course, We're old also. guys get in early all the time. <laughs> Punctual, man. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely love the hat, though. I have to represent. It's just re- covering up my afro right now. <laughs> <laughs> How you been? How, guys, How have you been, Harv? guys building up? We're all good from here. How are you there? Good, good. Oh, you want to say hi to all the TNT fans that are watching right now, Harvey? Good evening, TNT fans. We miss you guys. Hope you all are doing well and safe out there. We'll just say hi to some of them very quickly. Um, to Kathleen Love Tubo, Pia Santos, Ajen Cosmiano, Steph Pasicolan. November Carey, Johnny Achina, Lenny Anigan, Hazel De La Rosa Miguel, Martin Tabudlong, Christina Ramos, all of you guys, thank you so much for joining us here. And, and I have to say that this was not our idea. It was actually an idea of this guy coming in. He called me late last night. He said, I think we should do an episode together with the TNT crew. He said that he, you were talking regularly uh, UTNT stalwarts, and it is this dude on your screens right now, Ali Peak, who called up several members of the TNT Gatropa to be able to join us. And he'll be joining us in just a little bit. I'm here, guys. There, what's Ali. up? Hi, Ali. Hey, Magoo, what's going on, man? Hey, Harv, what's up, man? What's going on? Really excited about this one. Um, are we live now? We are live, <laughs> Ali. Oh, my God, okay. Right on, man. Right on. We, I think we're still w- waiting for Jimmy. Said he's going to be uh, in, and Rob Reyes and uh, Kelly Williams. So it's going to be waiting on those guys in a bit. Ali, how about you say hi to the TNT fans watching right now? What's up, guys? It's been a long time, but you know we all had to get together here for a special moment for uh, Renadel Del Campo, who has been a long time teammate of ours and we experienced a lot of success with them and it was just an incredible journey so we just wanted to pay tribute to uh to this basketball player and his uh okay. his legacy that he's left behind and just an announcement cap is here ice what up jim what's up cap <laughs> There's some nice hair going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How are you, Cap? Hey, Harv, I can only see... Hey, Carlo, I can only see Harv. Uh, I think you are on uh, speaker view. Try the gallery view or, or try to turn it sideways. Come on, tech Wait, guy. I got it. Boom. <laughs> um, I'm... I'm stepping into the digital world. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Pete? You're also What's up? What's up, Cap? How are you doing? Jimmy? What's up, Jimmy? We're all I'm trying to bar- set up. Chilling, a, uh, man. Well, not me. <laughs> I'm I'm good. I'm good. Hey, we have we have another guest coming in. Hey, you didn't invite this guy. I did. It is a babyface assassin himself. Oh yeah! Hey, 
Hey, Larry. Larry, how it's you doing, Mr. man? Mr. What up, Larry? <laughs> hey, brothers. Mr. Punisher. <laughs> how you doing, man? Hey, right, Cap. We have another one coming in. We have another one coming in right now. Hey, hey you guys yeah, like my virtual? Welcome. You like you like my virtual background? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby. There we go. <laughs> I feel oh, honored in the house in the presence of such greatness right now. <laughs> Dang, look at that beard, Harv. Yeah, I still can't grow a full. I got patches in it still. I broke down and shaved mine off the other day. I couldn't keep looking at my the hair is bad enough, man. I had I had to wear a hat. It was just getting bad. Hey. You know, you, you know, Rob. Hey Rob, unfortunately, we can't be like Harvey and Al. Lee and Larry, so I shaved my awful mustache like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's about to come in, guys. Hold on, hold on. It was getting real bad. Oh, that's a sweet background, man. I'm still Zoom illiterate. I gotta figure out how to do that. Hey, Cap. A lot of TNT fans are already watching. Can you say hi to them now? Oh yeah. Hello to all the TNT fans. Stay safe out there. I guess we can start off. We have enough people in the room already. We can start off uh, by asking uh, just your, your thoughts about Ranedel de Ocampo uh, and his retirement. Your initial reactions to that. Who wants to go first? Uh, let's start off with Harvey. Mago, what's up, brother? <laughs> uh, you know, it's always sad to see, up, see someone go and retire. You know, it happened when Jimmy retired when Alfie retired. Um, you know, you build bonds with these guys and you know what the 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 work they put in, the dedication they put into the game and to walk away and you know, these guys walking away on top. Jimmy did, Ali and Ronadale. They done their best for the country. Ronadale, great example, uh, great Bills, leader. What's up? Kelly oh, hey, Williams in the building. <laughs> And the guy, so you, know, you never know if he's injured or sick. He's He has the same demeanor all the time, you know, and he, he just led us by example. How about Cap? Uh, you've been teammates with RDO both in TNT for, for a while and then for Gilas Filipinas as well. Yeah, you know, you know, for me, Carlo, and, and I think these guys share the same sentiment. You know, as you as you get older, and, and, you know, you get closer to retiring, you know, I'm, I'm four years removed from the game. Um, you know, Ali, you know, retired just before I did, but, you know, these guys are still going and, you know, just to see Ronaldo again, like you said, because we were teammates for so long, both with talk and text and the national team, you know, to see him, you know, not being in the game anymore, you know, like I, like I tweeted or sorry, like I, um, said on IG earlier, I said, you know, the game will miss him. Um, I, I really think, I really think he's been one of the best forwards in the PBA over the last decade. And, and that's both what he did in the PBA and also what he did on the national team. Um, it just, it just speaks volumes, like Harvey said, of his work ethic. And, and what a lot of people don't know was the quiet leader that Dell was. I mean, I know a lot of people know about the jokes and, and, and the funny stuff, but when it was, when it was, you know, the game was on the line, the championship was on the line. You know, I think all of us were confident knowing that we had another killer on the floor who was not afraid to take the big shot. And, and you know, more likely than not, Dell was knocking it down. He was a silent killer. You know, he was uh, – he just had that, that cool demeanor. Um, I know I kind of jumped in here, but I, I what I wanted to bring up was just some of this – some of the things that I remember from him personally, I remember going up against Patron and the year prior we had lost to Patron in, in the, the seventh game. And then we, we, played, we were in the same situation except we were in the semifinals, right? And we Great. were at the Astrodome. You had to mention this series. Oh, I'm sorry, Rob. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we were just uh, – I remember being in the locker room in the dugout and just trying to focus in. This was a very important game, obviously. And then I just kind of made eye contact with Dell, and he just kind of looked at me and he just nodded his head. He goes, I'm ready. And he would, he was, boy, was he ready? I just remember one move, one, one, one of his many moves. He had so many great moves. 
But it was just one move where it was the spin move. And then he had this hop, um, hop or whatever you want to call it, a hop and a skip. It was a spin move and a hop and a skip in the paint. And the hop and a skip was enough to, to get away from his defender. Didn't matter how big the guy was or athletic the guy was, he was able to create that type of space at that angle and get that shot off. And I just, that was the one shot that I remember specifically. And it was that time where we were starting to really, we got the lead and we we're starting to pull away from, uh, from Patron in that game seven. Well, maybe I can hop in. I was on the receding end of that game seven win. Um, it was one of the few years I was away from TNT, but, uh, I think if you look at this group too, and Larry is 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 an amazing teammate and friend also. But like, you see a bunch of fill-ins, and and I know that like you can't talk, uh, you know, PBA history without you know the impact of uh, or that that fill-in like local quote unquote local dynamic. And um, you know, I, if, of all the players that I can think of, I thought that Renadell was one of the best at. Um, Kind of bridging that gap like he was totally comfortable in any situation socially amongst his teammates he was like you know the the kind of best teammate you could hope for um you know he he treated everybody great from you know anyone in management to anyone on his team the ball boys um he treated everybody like family and uh i think specifically to him outside of everything that everybody's already mentioned and, and known it's like uh the the guy would just it, like I, I'll never forget. I mean, every time you make a playoff run, you want your best players like just being on ice when they don't need to be. But he would just go. You know, he would always want to go. He, he said he would. He would say, "I'll, I'll rest when I'm retired." So, uh, in my mind, it kind of makes my heart a little bit that he's at this point, just because um, a guy like that isn't. I don't know if if Randall would have ever willfully retired, you know, because he had he would he would literally he's not leaving until there's nothing in the tank, or or someone is keeping him off the court, or something is keeping him off the court because the guy uh, battled through anything, um, and, and and so just just from that respect, I mean, yeah, obviously losing an all time great. He was what my favorite PBA player to watch, even when we weren't teammates. Um, it's it's tough, but just knowing how tough he was and how what he would was willing to put himself through for his teammates and for his own uh you know his own uh, drive to win uh you know i'm 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 i just I, I'm, I'm happy to see him you know be able to rest in that sense but also sad knowing that uh a guy like that doesn't leave willingly you know so um you know we're wishing him the best on the next phase of whatever he has going on like who's next larry yeah, um, siguro kay Del lang, no? Uh, it's just sad. It's too bad lang that he had to um, hang up his sneakers already, no? Um, being in NLEX, no? I talk a lot to, a lot to, I talk to a lot of our young guys, the big guys, and I can't help but keep bringing up Del as an example to, for them to emulate. I mean, I think his, his skill set was just u very unique. And I, I just noticed that every day, in practice, uh, when it's the big men coaching, um, th there's always something that Ronnie Dell does that that cannot be taught by any other coach or any other player, and it's just too bad that um, the guys can't um, play against him. Um, they just have to watch his old tapes. Um, I just wish that um, you know they 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 could learn more from him because he. He just had a different way of understanding the game, and he was just a unique kind of player. So that was that. Um, that's what I'm sad about. Kel? Uh, yeah. Uh, shit. What 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 hasn't been said? You know, um, that was a great teammate. Man. I remember uh, before that, before I came to talk and text, uh, playing against him, twenty one, and. Uh, I, you know, Dale's, Dale's, Dale's hard, you know, he goes hard and he works hard and he plays hard. And uh, we collided during one uh, one play. And uh, it was one of those types of collides where it's like, are we about to fight right now type of thing? And then I turned around and Dale, Dale was just like, next play. I'm like, 
this dude's different. Like he's like, like <laughs> a whole mentality type of thing. I'm like, that's not the quiet ones are the dangerous ones, right? So I'm like, <laughs> but then uh, you know, I got to talking to that kid, and he was just one of the he was like one of the most uh, kind-hearted, you know, light-hearted guys. Um, always joking and knows when to break the tension. And it got to a point for me where it's like I didn't even know. I couldn't even take him serious anymore because he was always joking around. And uh, but then we got to our first finals, and he he just he just like he just switched on. And then we had the kind of team where it's like it was just like that, you know, with, with, with Jimmy Hart, everybody. He just kind of like locked in. But with with Dell, like Harp said, he's he's just got like this stoic. Nothing can rattle him. I've never seen Dell really react. I saw him get his nose broken in practice and he just walked off the court, blood running down his face and with not, not even a flinch, you know? So I, I, I learned a lot from him uh, just watching him uh, and, and to, to hear him, you know, retiring yesterday, it, was, it, 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 it hit me, you know, cause obviously, you know, you know, time moves on and things happen or whatever, but, you know, when, when, when someone like that, you know, announces retirement, for what I feel is a little early, um, you know, it, 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 it kind of hits different. So it's going to be different. The PBA is definitely going to be different um, without them. But I, I'm, I'm excited for him and the time he's going to have with this family. And we're also joined by TNT assistant coach Josh Reyes. Hi, coach. I like the haircut. Hi, guys. Who did it? Who did it? Good to see you all. Hi, Josh. It's that's a that's the Korean no, Korean novella syndrome. <laughs> uh, uh, coach Josh, just very quickly, uh, what made that TNT run special for for you as a coach? Well, it's it's obvious. I'm I'm a very I was a very young coach coming in, and all these guys in this group, right, were very very easy to to work with. Number one, they have collectively they all have they were all very competent, high basketball IQ, and just you know they just did what what you know they did the things important to winning, and that's. Um, working together, listening to what's important, and and, and executing. Magu, you have a question? I, I remember back in those days, um, the coaching staff and even Boss MVP was saying that with you guys as a group, Ranidel or RDO was really the missing piece that you guys were, uh, needed at that time. And History would tell with all the success you guys got. What we would would be your reaction to that, Cap? Um, I think I think Magoo. Um, I think Ronadell made his impact on our team um, pretty obvious. Um, his first game with us. Yeah. Um, I for, I forget what year it is. It was it was that long ago, but I do remember it was his first game with us. And oh, wait. Oh, wait. we were playing. We were, was it, was it, 2008, 2009. 2008, 2009. Okay. Or actually, what would have been, yeah. Okay. We, were, we were playing Air 21, I think, for a yeah. spot in the semifinals, I believe. Yeah, automatic. And, you know, we, 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 called, we called timeout. And, you know, Coach, Coach Chuck calls a play and we run it. And, and Dell gets open and, and hits the game winner in his first game with us. And, you know, I think I think we all knew how good he was, and and you know, all respected him just from a competitive standpoint. But but seeing that in his first game, uh, you know, I, I really feel like the rest is history, um, and that just kind of set us off. I think it, when you look at a team like Talking Text and the mo many runs that they've had, and the many like trades and impactful players that have come and gone in the team, you know, for the longest time, the team has been just stacked with star players and star talent and, and the ones who haven't succeeded. It's been a tough adjustment to where guys have to either modify their game or, um, or adjust to, uh, you know, 
their their role reduction or or just the change in how they use their skill set in that you know within those groups and and dell being an all-time player i think what what was so awesome i mean like having been on the team multiple times like he was just the perfect combination of skill set and character because like when he had to be the man there was never any question in his mind but he was never ever uh, unwilling to defer or or you know hit the hot the guy who was open or hot or whatever um and and his just had his demeanor and attitude like kelly said like the guy in any moment could say something that would make everyone die laughing but in any moment could get everyone locked in um and and i mean it's just you know when obviously he's an all-time great so he's gonna have all of these rare these rare things but just the perfect combination of skill and and character in my opinion i mean i uh i think that he 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 along with obviously jimmy and, and jason and harvey um i think is the face of that tnt era i mean he came in that like you said right and just right from the jump was was we're like yeah okay this we're gonna follow this guy when we need to you know and uh and was just a steady I mean, I would, I, I never in a million years would have thought he would have been traded from TNT after that run. I mean, he stayed within the group, but um, it was just I, I would like if you think talk and text, you're gonna think you know Jimmy Harvey, Jason Castro, Ranadel, um, at least for the foreseeable future, I would imagine. I remember that game, Rob. You almost crushed Ranadel trying to hug him. Uh, yeah. the whole time after, after yeah. the shot went in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was right there. I saw I had the best seat in the house, man. And and, and I knew what that meant. The second that went in, I was automatic semis. Uh it was my rookie year. And and uh I, I don't wanna like like I literally I, I am one hundred percent serious. Renadel was my favorite PBA player, like prior to him being teammates. I remember his brother was my roommate in training camp, my rookie year. And you're supposed to get to know your your roommate, and then I, uh, I was peppering Rand Yancey with questions about his brother the whole time, and he was like, "What's going on, man?" I was like a fanboy. Uh, Guys, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we have yeah. a very special guest ab about to join us. Ooh, yes! <laughs> Let's welcome the man himself. Hey, there we go. There he is. Yes. Yeah. What's up, man? Congratulations. Finally. <laughs> Hi, Kuya Del. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the police station. Of course. Sick Del. <laughs> the suspect. Bring it up. <laughs> of course. Of course, Kuya Ranidel would, would find a way to make it all laugh. <laughs> Um, Fidel, um, seeing, seeing all, all these faces uh, on the screen right now, ang dami niyong napanalunan. Ano yung pinaka, pinaka malinaw na memory? What is your, you know, your, your favorite moment competing with everyone here? Uh, yung sobrang pagod na pagod na kami sa practice. Uh, talagang tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung practice. Tapos, uh, yung halos hindi kita pero mag pa rin. Yan you know. Yun yung mga hindi ko makakapractice eh. Very competitive talaga. Uh, Non-stop. Ang tuloy-tuloy yung practice. Uh, nadadala naman namin sa game. Uh, Larry, I have a question. Because you, you were in a unique spot dahil nakalaban mo sa finals yung, yung TNT when you were still playing for the Alaska Aces. What was it like going up against um, some of these players? Um, I remember sa game planning namin sa Alaska, no? uh, si Coach Joel, he would always say, si Renidel, wala talaga tayong panapat dyan. He's a, a matchup nightmare talaga eh, sa, to any team. No? So, um, wala, we just tried to play our best. Uh, we had execute lang, pero we, we, we knew we couldn't shut down Renidel. Ganun, ganun siya kagaling. Ganun yung game plan namin. So parang pahirapan na lang talaga siya. And, you know, execute our triangle, execute our defense really well. Kasi, you know, wala eh. Parang yung trend ngayon na 
yung bigs na stretch na marunong mag 3 points parang ahead si Randy Dell of that curve eh. parang nauna siya eh. parang siya yung in a way game changer si Randy Dell ng PBA eh, di ba parang the game right now kailangan may may shooting ka na hindi hindi na eh si Randy Dell natural na meron siya nun. so ang hirap talaga niya bantayan before to ba yan <laughs> to yan pare <laughs> Oh, tawa. Sungit mo eh. <laughs> Sinabihan mo Ay, na ako kanina yan. Tatawa na ako. <laughs> Rob Reyes. <laughs> uh, yes, Mago. Is that Ronnie Dell behind you? How'd you do that? You talking to me? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Ali. Yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, I had down. I googled. I go. I, Della, Renadell. I hope you like my uh, my little tribute here. See the background. I know, right? See. Yeah. No. I, I had to. I had to Google. I want one of those. <laughs> yeah. Go to go to stop video, Magoo. Go to stop video. It's the arrow on your right, and then um, you click it, and then it, it'll. You know, virtual virtual uh, background comes up, but you got to oh. download a picture though. You got to Google one of his pictures, download That's it. That's very hype. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out later. I just want to go around the room, I guess, um, to to ask everyone, what was your favorite championship with that PNT squad? Like the one that really stuck to you, uh, you won a lot of championships together. Which one was your pe- personal favorite? Uh, I'm I'm gonna start with with Harvey. It's hard to pick one, um, yeah. but I think the first one we won uh, in Ronadale's first <laughs> on a few weeks, what are their months? 2008, we won that, and then I want to say the last one we won. It was a game seven game double seven. overtime against Rain or Shine and Ron Adele was just unstoppable. I mean, we don't win that game. I know we had import, but that game, Ron Adele was our import. And the player, he put us on our back, on his back, um, double overtime. He was the finals MVP. And, you know, he just playing with greatness and just sitting there on the court with him. Was, I'm like, wow, is this one going to go in too? He's just shooting from <laughs> everywhere, you know? But you know, it was just a great honor to play with you, Dell. You see, I'm trying to grow my beard like you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you talk about a guy that could play in any era. You know, yeah. Any era, yeah. this guy could fit in. You know, previous yeah. to us coming into the league, all the way up till now. I mean, the guys yeah. are transfers, so you know, we all admire you, Dell. And those are two championships that stand out to me. The first one, Ron and Dale, and the last one with them as well. Yeah, thank you. Hey, hey, hey Carlo, just to chime in. You, you know, guys, I just watched that game, that game seven, I think three nights ago. Considering we have so much time on our hands nowadays. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, 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 literally, I literally watched that game three nights ago when the kids went to bed, and it was, I mean, incredible. You know, as, as remember, I remember, uh, you know, I was already retired for the first time. Uh, during that championship, but man, Ronadell, the shots that you made during that game, especially in the yeah. second overtime, not surprised, but incredible, man. Yeah, incredible. me, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Anyone you. has a different answer? Anyone has a different answer? That that first championship and the last one. I uh, earlier today I was just watching a. Uh, the uh, what is it game four against rain or shine the sweep uh the last seven minutes someone posted the last seven minutes from game four you remember that um 2013 um and i think it was like a couple of nights for me a couple of nights before that game when i realized i was gonna retire for the first time and so uh yeah, that was a special one for me, but that was last seven minutes, man. I mean, same thing. I think we went a stretch. Uh, JD hit a hit a crazy three at the buzzer. And then uh, 
Dell threw me a lob, then Dell hit the three. And these are like back to back plays. Then Jimmy hit a deep three, they hit another three, then Dell dropped it off to Har for the or to, to Ryan for the M one. And then I mean it was it was absolutely bananas and it just it brought me right back to that time, man. I I could feel like like feel like we were still in the building, man. Every time I watch those games or any of those championships, I, I it, it feels like man, it doesn't feel that long ago, to be quite honest. Every day, I, I miss those. I, I miss those days. I miss you all, all you guys. And I mean, we had a super, yeah, super special group of guys, man. I, I don't know if if anybody else feels the same, but it, but to Kelly's point, like some days it feels like yesterday, and then some days it feels like a million years ago. It just you know it goes back and forth. Um, yeah. You know, I think when you see a video clip or something, then it just you get back in that moment. You, you, you feel yeah. those moments again. Um, and, and and I think maybe a little. I, I would say the same. I, the last championship probably meant the most the most to me. Um, but I guess the reason would just be because a testament, you know, also to Dell, not just the skill level, but prior to that conference, we were in first place and we changed imports, and uh, we were. I had a special team meeting with the advance notice that we were getting a guy that could either take us all the way or bury us based on how we accepted him and the type of environment we created for him. And um, if it wasn't for the type of family, the type of relationships we all had, the chemistry created, you know, a lot by, by Renadel and the type of uh, uh, environment we created for a guy like Ivan, you know, we don't get into a point when you're, you're in your second overtime, guys are broken down and bleeding and, and, um, and, and, and you, and you fight through that, you know, that, that was this, I think we had another triple overtime game uh, that season or the, that conference. And, and, you know, like <clears throat> and we lost and, you know, like quite frankly, without the type of leadership that a guy like Renadel brings, you find yourself in that situation again. And you could, you, but you no, know, like, like Jimmy said earlier, there was never a doubt, you know, like we, when Dan, Renadel was in the court, it was like a calm feeling like, Oh, well, we know, you know, there's that, at least there's that, it just went on down the line, but it didn't get past Dell. So that, that was a that championship was pretty special for a lot of reasons, I think. Coach Josh, um, we all saw the result <laughs> nung pagsasama ng TNT from the Tropang Texters to the Katropa. We saw the results, we saw the championships. But how were these guys sa practice naman? The, these guys like working with uh, each other. On and off the court, these guys would go out you know the practice would be would be fun. I remember really um, personally. I looked forward to to going to practice. It wasn't it wasn't um, it wasn't work for me. Especially when we finally put these guys together. You know, Rani Del came in, Kelly and Ryan came in. Uh, Larry was the final guy, I think, to come in. I was like, yes, we can finally run the dribble drive correctly. <laughs> so, and, you know, those stretches when we ourselves, me, with, with the input of everybody in this room, you know, we were tinkering and, and playing around and improving the dribble drive, our style. You know, we took, we took the league by storm and nobody really knew what we were doing. And, 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 and these guys made it happen. You know, these guys took it to heart. And a lot of the, the concepts or, of our offense came from you know, came from Kelly, Jimmy, Ranidel because of the things they can do. A lot of things I teach now just came from Harvey running the baseline. Sometimes I thought randomly, but as you watch videos of, of a lot of these things, you, you, you get to see the, the timing and the, the genius of their actions. And then now nowadays, I start teaching them. But before then, it was just these guys figuring it out and executing by themselves, making it happen, and just playing off each other. And, and you can only, that, that kind of thing, that kind of um, chemistry can only start during practice. And when I say practice, you want practice araw-araw, when things get tough, magjajoke bigla si Ranidel, when things get, or Kaya otherwise, ko. if things get, get too rowdy, magiging seryosa na si Randil and everybody will be serious. And also in our team building um, activities, whether it was in the rapids, whether it was uh, camping in the desert in Qatar, 
And then the next day we'll, we have a game against against the Qatar national team. So those those things that was that really was Kelly's favorite. Everybody. Yeah, Kelly, uh, Kelly yeah. almost died. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Hospital anywhere around. I ain't get no sleep out in the desert. <laughs> there was just a couple. There was just a snake or two in the sand. Yeah, man, y'all had me in the corner of the tent too. Anyway. <laughs> that's another, that's, that's that's another story. That's another story. We're, we're in the final few minutes of our first part. Uh, very quickly around the room, what was your favorite Ranedel de Ocampo moniker? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> who likes who likes Rani Delightful? Who likes Rani Delightful? Like Rani Delightful. <laughs> that might that might be. <laughs> He said the way he said it though, he'll just say it randomly <laughs> in the middle of practice. Right? If you like, right, I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Run and Dirk. Run and Dirk. Yeah. Run and Dirk. <laughs> that I mean, I, you know, nobody else in the PBA can be can 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 be compared to someone like Dirk Nowitzki other than Dell. Yeah. <laughs> right, Dirk. Dirk. Good, good, good. Pretty, pretty. It's still not as good as Babyface Assassin, though. <laughs> It's close. Part It's one A, one B. No, <laughs> oh, baby, no, baby. You got watch, Josh. What's, what's your favorite? So I, I feel, I feel bad now. You Hodor, you didn't catch on. Hodor. You Hodor, my favorite. <laughs> Di pare nyata alam ni Kuya Del yun eh. Napanood mo na ba yan kay Del? Uh, until now retire na ako. I don't have money care. Tiwala. <laughs> <laughs> RDO pa rin para parang MVP. Guys, um we will take a quick break here on 2OT. When we come back, we will talk about some of the favorite moments of the TNT Catropa in their championship run, maybe some of their more fun experiences with Ranidel de Ocampo for Gilas Pilipinas as well. Please join us once again when we come back. Back with us here on 2OT. Thank you for sticking with us. Carlo Pamintuan with Magumar John. Larry share already here in the room with Coach Josh Reyes. You'll be welcoming... Nakabalik na ba ako? ...members of TNT. Yes, sir. Nandiyan ka na ulit. Kumusta Adito ka? Adito na ako. Kanina pa eh. Putol. 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 Kinuha ko yung mga iPad ng mga anak ko para walang kasabay sa Wi-Fi. <laughs> pa- parang tubig lang ah. <laughs> oh, confiscated. <laughs> What's up, Larry? Hi, Magu. Ito na. Um, Harvey coming in. Coach Jimmy. Ay, si Ardio. Uh... I'll give him back the thing. Coach, um, Coach Josh, uh, when, when you were putting together yung, siyempre, with the coaching staff, when you were trying to look for the pieces that would really, you know, combine to, to give you one of the powerhouses in, in, the, in the PBA, paano nyo na-determine kung sino yung mga kailangan nyong idagdag? Um, no. What attitude? I believe my father said this um, this morning in his in his um, post in IG. We wanted players who were highly skilled, high in skill, but low maintenance. And if you if you look around, um, if you look around at the players uh, we have here, all of them are very low maintenance players, despite having. Uh, very high amount of talent. And Rob, I know hustle is talent, so I put you in that category. <laughs> You're on mute, Rob. God, do I belong in this group of <laughs> multi talented, successful guys? But, you know, a guy like Deldo, uh, you know, makes a guy like me in those situations feel appreciated. I mean, in my, my second run with TNT, I had many moments you know coaches were believed in me when guys were hurt and stuff like that and then um you know when you when you take a when you take a seat you know let's just say a guy like kelly gets hurt and i i start a few games and play but then you take a seat and you see the talent on the court um that that 
that second run, uh, I, I never, I always felt a part of the team. I always felt a part of the success. You know, when you're in practice and a guy like Renadell, who's, who's could, could take a seat if he wants to, is going, going hard, playing hard in practice, pushing you, making you better, hanging with you after to take shots, hanging with you after asking you about what's going on with your life and your family and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, let's be real. I played for a lot of teams in the PBA and, um, you know, there was just no better family than when I was with that TNT group. And a lot of that was Benadel. Um, you know, you, like I, I mean, I, I am obviously not the most talented guy in this group of guys that have been on this show, but uh, I mean, I, I believe in my, my ability and that I, I was, I belonged in the PBA, but I, when, when I was on that team with talking text in the times it, when I was not playing, there was never any animosity or ill feeling on my part. It was always, um, you know, these are my guys. I'm contributing in practice. I'm, I'm going hard. The coaches created an atmosphere and, and push us on practice. And then, and then guys like Dell just made it fun. You know, they made it fun and they made me feel like a part of the success, even when I wasn't on the court. You were very <laughs> unlucky, Rob. I thought the moment you were, you were starting to turn the corner, was that time you, you you had your second ACL uh, injury in practice, yeah. and you were having like a hell of a stretch of practice before yeah. that happened? So it was just one of those things. Yeah, I, I have I, I'm I'm proud of what what happened considering all that, but um, you know, I, I guess some other things about Dell insights about Dell and my relationship with him too. Um, you know, I, he told me early in our, that my rookie year that uh, my uncle Eric, who you all, all know, um, gave him donated some of his shoes, his basketball yeah. shoes that Dell got. You know, and that always that that along with you know the type of thing that Harvey did for other people inspired me big time. You know, like because I was stingy and and. <laughs> So, so after he told me that, I made it a point. Like when we would go on the road, if, if there was an opportunity to give someone shoes, I gave them up. And um, and then I even still this past year was able to go back to the Philippines and give surfboards to kids in La Union. And I, I mean, quite frankly, a big driving force in that was thinking that look at this guy Renadell, who's one of the the country's you know all time greatest players who was gifted a pair of shoes that who knows how impactful that was. Maybe it wasn't, but maybe it, it helped him in some way get to where he was. And, and um, I, I thought, you know, with the, with surfing being an Olympic sport, like God, I hope that one day my dream one day is that there's a, a Filipino Olympian um, who got a surfboard, you know, that, that I gave that uh, and that was because of Dell, you know, like it just, he inspired me in, in, in that way as well. Bravo. Um, I've always wanted to ask this one question to all of the TNT guys, and this might be the perfect time to actually ask it because I'm at home and you guys can't beat me up. Um, what would be more forgettable for you guys? The almost Grand Slam back in 2011. You guys were up 2-1 and one in that series. You switched imports by game six but you forced the game seven after winning by 26 as compared to but wait there's a foul the Denzel Bowles free throws what hurt more oh. what would you rather forget between those two? Oh, yeah. I think we all would agree that the Denzel Bowles questionable foul still hurt and it still hurts today I hate no sugar coat it hard you know it, it's deep there's deep it wasn't a foul <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a foul. It was not a foul. <laughs> Don't I wish, I wish was Kenny was here. Hey, let, hey let's call it what it is. Out. It wasn't a foul. But the that one still hurts today. That one still hurt. <laughs> but I will, I will, again, it wasn't a foul for the third time. But <laughs> I will give Denzel Bulls credit because for him – you know, being a guy fresh out of college, he did step up to the line in that in that environment and made the two free throws. And the fact that we didn't have Donnell Harvey in overtime, you know, was was obviously a, a huge advantage to them because he he just started making shots and, and that pretty much spelled the difference. But you know, I think I think in that in that run for the Grand Slam, yeah, we we fell short. We had a lot of we had a lot of things going on with our team. You know, we, we were pretty banged up. We made import, you know, switches during the conference. But, I mean, hey, we, we were, what, a quarter away from winning the Grand Slam. Yeah. 
know. I, I, I remember I that. I don't, uh, you guys ended the eliminations top of the heap, but then you started having problems in the playoffs. And then in the finals, even before you switched back to your original import, Jason Castro got hurt and didn't even get yeah, to we play were, we were uh, all pretty banged up. one or two games. We were all pretty banged up. If I, if I remember correctly, I know I was hurt. I know Ron Adele was. I know Ryan Reyes was. Um, you know, we were we were a team on, on fumes, to be honest. Um, but... And that, that's what again, that, no, no that's excuses. what happens when you go for three straight, right? For sure, for sure. And, and you know there weren't any excuses. I mean, again, you give you give credit to Patron. You know they they took us to overtime and, and and won. But I mean, we 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 poured everything we had into that season to try to get the Grand Slam. We just fell short. If if I could weigh in real quick, I wasn't a part of those those setbacks in TNT. But when I did come back. Uh, B Meg or or uh, whatever they had changed their name to was that was like the roadblock leading up to that last championship that we won with Ranadel. Like it, we we were undefeated going in, lose to them in the finals. We make it to the semis, I think, again with Paul Harris. Like climb back to the last game and then then lose to them again. And then they stood in our way when we had Ivan to get to the finals. And I think that that you know that. That was another reason why that was such a special finals, is because mm. it was like getting over that, that getting that monkey off our back, that uh, the, uh, getting through those guys and being Denzel Bowles and uh, getting to the championship. I know I, I know I felt it, and I wasn't even a part of, of those specific teams, but it was like finally we beat these guys, and like now nothing stands in our way. We felt like. And then, um... Kumusta naman yung ano, yung adjustment, syempre kailangan sabayan ka nila sa Englishan mo. <laughs> I'm 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 wondering who's the monkey in the back. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey in the back. Okay lang, nakakasabay naman sa English. Kasi yung teacher ko nung Teacher ko sa English, marunong magaling dati. <laughs> you know, Cap, um, some people call Ranadel de Ocampo uh, pambansang siko or the national elbow. What, what's your favorite moment featuring that specific facet of Ranadel de Ocampo? Uh, you know, I just, I'll say this about Del. You know, and this and this falls under why, you know, one of the you know many many reasons why he's he's the ideal teammate. You know, no matter what's happening on the court, if you if you get into something with somebody, whoever the opponent is, I promise you, the moment you turn around, the first guy standing behind you to have your back will be Ronaldo. <laughs> with maybe an L, with maybe an L or two ready. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Harv? You have well, you any know, any story? Um, Did you ever receive any in practice? <laughs> in practice, no. But when Ronadell was with FedEx, and I used to have to guard him, I caught a few blows from him. But like Kelly said earlier, his facial expression never changed. You know, I'm ready to get mad and pissed off, and he's just looking like nothing ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing about Ronadell that I appreciate the most of him being a great teammate is the guy never missed practice. He never sat out of drills. Uh, when he was on the national team, you know, we'd give the guys breaks. The team would give him a break, like, you know, don't come back for four or five days, just rest your body. But Ronadell would be there first day back off the plane, you know? And like Rob said, Ronadell would always say, I'll just rest when I, when I retire. Yes. And he'd be in there. And I didn't even know he was exhausted from a long flight or if he was injured, he was right there with us, you know, <laughs> and I really appreciate that, respect that about Ronadell. Thank I, you. I got a, a Ronadell elbow story. Uh, so we were in Vegas for a training camp and there's stories for days on that uh, for another time. But uh, when <laughs> we were, we were tuning up against like uh Kelly Obre and like a bunch of future NBA, uh, you know, NBA players slash imports who were still in high school at the time. And, I mean, they were good. And 
and I know that uh, some of them are kind of getting physical. And I want to. There was a there was a moment when when uh, we everyone was kind of in game mode, and I know a kid was uh, not showing respect, and, and I'm pretty sure Randall. Renadell let him know uh, what time it was in that game. And I just remember watching laughing on the sideline like this, this 16 year old kid has no clue what he's trying to, what he's getting involved with potentially here. <laughs> yeah. Those were hard trainings twice uh, a day, every day, right? Yeah. Every day. We, no one was staying out late or anything. Cause everyone was so tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <Her own code. laughs> hey Dell, I said on my Instagram post too, I miss I miss your Tagalog lessons on Twitter, man. Yeah. You want you want one word? <laughs> word. Huh? Yeah. Uh nagpasirog sirog. <laughs> translation, translation, Grendel. <laughs> Zero zero is uh, airplane out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Version ng pasuray suray ah. <laughs> suray Kelly, suray. Kelly, before you enter the room, Magu was asking about that about that call on Denzel Bowles, and <laughs> everyone was saying that it was not a foul. Do you agree? Uh, you trying to get me? Pumped up right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to start some stuff. That dude might be watching now. Uh, nah, man, that wasn't. A, are we allowed to cuss? It wasn't. We, that was not no foul. That was not a foul. I watched that one recently too. I was ready to punch something. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Rob, Rob hit it on the head, man. It was definitely a monkey on our backs. That one was. Yeah. There's no foul. No, I might have got his shorts a little bit, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. That's a, that that RB, that that that, that, that quietness right there is how we all feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a question we, from we uh, hired the live uh, audience. What's up? Oh, we'll go. Uh, from VG Tesoro. Question, guys. You think you can get any championship this year? Your group together, I guess, competing in this modern era of the PBA. Could you win a championship or a Grand Slam, I guess? Like this, 38 years old, 40 years old. <laughs> or 42. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you give us a few weeks to practice. I don't know anything. <laughs> how long? How long is the game? You know, yeah. How long is the preseason? <laughs> Maybe in the I was prime. talking to Ronadel about it yesterday. Are we talking? To well, we should have game? a full forty and over league. <laughs> yeah. You know, the PBA fans are such big fans. If they had a forty and over league, there'd be there'd be some following. I guarantee you that. Yeah, for sure. For, that seems to be a great idea. Maybe the we country, have can it still be a big three. The country's ice supply would be on shortage, though. <laughs> <laughs> can it be a forty-eight minute game, or maybe forty or <laughs> short? It has to be running clock. Running clock. <laughs> running clock. <laughs> you might just play a, a real hard game of twenty-one. <laughs> 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 Uh, guys, what I was, what thinking, was, it I was like? thinking more 10 minutes running time. <laughs> <laughs> another another unique unique facet of TNT back then was that you won all those championships with Coach Chot, with Coach Norman, with Coach Joel. What was it like learning from some of the all-time great coaches in the PBA during that run of yours with, with TNT? Kredel, kumusta yung mga lessons na natutunan mo from Coach Cho to Coach Norm to Coach Joe? Uh, <clears throat> ano, sa, sa style, magkakaiba sila. Meron lang silang ano, uh, ang mga naging naging parang magkakatulad sila, ano eh, yung winning, winning coach sila. Gusto nilang manalo lagi. Uh, 
tapos matalino silang coach. Uh, talagang batikan na sa TBA. So, swerte rin kami dahil naging coach namin sila. Uh, Reyes sila, Chico. So, yun. Um, lahat, talaga, lahat naman ng coach may pagkakaiba eh. So, meron sila ang kanya-kanyang paraan. Um, siguro, ma- napaganda rin na kami mga player eh, kumbaga solid yung samahan namin tapos nakakaintindihan ako. So, yun, nandun naman si Coach Josh. Nandun uh, <laughs> siya, di ba? So, at parang, uh, yun lang, yun lang. Ikaw, Larry, uh, from, from all those coaches, ano yung mga pinaka, kunwari, malalalim na lessons na natutunan mo dun sa tatlo? Uh, siguro kay Coach Chot, um, one of the things that stuck to me was, he said, you have to be an unconscious shooter. So, parang, pinarimind niya ako na huwag ako masyado mag-isip. Sa sistema ng ng TNT and dribble drive, kailangan no hesitation, aggressive ka, and um, y- you're just playing with the flow. Baga. Uh, so, you know, sobrang blessed namin no, to, to be under those coaches. I mean, companies, they would pay so much for Coach Chot, Coach Norman, Coach Yen, Coach Jong, whoever to to speak, no? And then, sa, sa mga, ano, sa mga taon lang, no? Tapos kami, every day, we, we get to listen to them um they get to share all their wisdom to us so uh oh, grabe for me it's ano uh mas ang gandang school niya for learning no ang dami kong sobrang natutunan from sa mga coaches na yun so um ayun kay coach Chot eh iba yung ano eh si coach Chot talaga gave me all the confidence in the world to be successful and obviously sa TNT that was my most successful run in the PBA you know and just Sobrang thankful ako Coach Jot for bringing out the best in me. Coach Josh too. And all the guys here, obviously. Go? Magu, you have a question? Ito, may nagpapatanong, I guess, for everybody. Steph Pasikolan is asking, why haven't you guys gotten on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, man. <laughs> like, what, seriously, what would that look like? Me trying to do something like that? It'll be fun. fun. I'd watch it. it. It'll be fun. It'd be, it'd be normal, Ali. Man, that would break the internet, Ali P. <laughs> You're just waiting hey, for cool. everybody to tell you to do it. No, I'll pass. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Larry. <laughs> Cap, are we gonna shock our roll again, Cap? <laughs> oh man! Well, that that, that was the one time. Time group one to eh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the one time uh, trial there. When you have a family, Jim will do anything to feed your family. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that, that, is, that is very very true. <laughs> Hey, Coach Charlie D is watching. What's up? Boss Charlie. We, have, we also have Charlie. a question here. We also have a question. Uh, one of them was asking, who was your favorite TNT import during that run? Ooh. Man, that's, that's tough. Oh, yeah, wow. You know what? I'll... I'll... Can I? I'll answer. I'll go with Paul Harris, man. Yeah, yeah, Harris, yeah. without a doubt. I mean, actually, I, and I'll I'll say this too. That I think at that point I played I played the longest out of everybody, and I played with a lot of imports. And Paul Harris really stood out to me. I mean, he, he wasn't the most talented guy. Look, look, look. Compared to all the other imports. But the guy just the thing, the one thing about Paul, he worked his ass off. I mean, if you have seen some of his workouts, uh, even before games, he would swim laps, he'd be running, he'd be running on the treadmill, he didn't drink, he rarely went out. Um, he was a, a family man and um he just had a great attitude overall. 
he busted his ass. He had a great, great attitude, especially for someone being in his first time playing overseas. Yeah, I go with Paul Harris. Yeah. I remember, guys, grabi siya pagalitan ng erpat ko. My father really used to to scold and cuss Paul Harris out. To Paul yeah. Harris was almost in tears. There are games that uh, iiyak na talaga si Paul, but he just stuck with it and stuck with the team. Yeah, he was he was a professional. He was really a professional. Yeah, it, it would be it would be hard to find an import who worked as hard as Paul. Um, but he's he's definitely one for me. But again, I think in my in my in my time with Talking Text, I think other notable guys, um, man. Uh, Sean Daniels, yeah. who I know Ronadell played with at Air 21. Um, Gerald Honeycutt for Harvey and I way, way back. <laughs> um, uh, who else? Those, yeah. those, those, oh, and, and, and Donnell uh-huh. Harvey. Donnell Harvey, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But the only guys to win a championship was uh, Paul and Ivan, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. And Donnell. Oh, wait. Is anything like that? Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> exactly. You are right. Exactly. You are right. I'm about to fight somebody right quick now. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all about to stand me up. Yeah. <laughs> Side note, though, I remember the first day I walked in uh, and Donnell was there. Man, I was tripping because he's all he's had. My, he's like the all time like favorite dunk. I remember Mom. watching him in his all star high school all star dunk contest or something. My all, all my favorite all time dunk ever, and I walk in and this dude's in there. I was like, "Oh man, this is crazy!" Like, I'm never, I'm, I'm rarely starstruck ever on, about anybody, but I saw that dude. I was like, "Oh man!" Well, hey, Kel, do you remember? <laughs> hey, Kel, do you remember? Do you remember his first practice? We were at Treston. He walks in. We all know it's 150 degrees in the Philippines. He walks in all black. <laughs> Black <laughs> black pants, black jacket, black Give me a sunglasses hat, on. black sunglasses, yeah, yeah. puts puts his stuff down, takes the jacket off, and yeah. this dude is built like Yeah. Straight out he of the movie like Blade. He looks like yeah. Blade. <laughs> to the other end and starts shooting around. He just yeah, yeah. yeah. Zero body fat. He had muscles <laughs> in places I didn't think muscles existed. <laughs> yeah. Hey Carlo. Carla Magoo, here's the funniest part. So coach calls us in. And he says, uh, Donnell, you want to say anything to the guys? He said, uh, you know, it's an honor to be here. Um, all you guys just shoot the basketball. I'll get the rebound. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was it. And That's he did. All he, said. he did. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, yeah I, I really uh, wish we could have won a championship. Uh, you know, I, I think if there was an import that deserved it. Deserved it. He, he really, he was really that that guy that deserved it. Yeah, and I guess it's it's only fitting to to. Sorry, Rob. Um, no, yes, you, Rob. You were saying, Rob. Oh, I'm, yeah, no, I, I was asking, uh, uh, Donnell never made it back into the PBA, if I if I recall. Like, did, was he just lined up in jobs elsewhere? Did, like, did, was he so salty after, the, you know, the – He came happened? back. He came back. He came back the following year. Did he? Oh, okay. I, could, I didn't remember him coming back. Did he play – I think PBA he would have won that so. championship if Ali Pico no. was not found out. He came – be yeah. honest. He came back. He came back, but one of his family members had an accident, and he had to fly back yeah. to the states. Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Ago. Oh, just another question, guys. Um, another question, guys. Um, I guess it's only fitting to see your kids um, popping out on the screens because uh, TNT always prided itself with having a family dynamic to it. Can you can you explain to me how, how was it like um, having a team, also having everyone involved, your relationship, no mga, no mga 
kapamilya nyo nakakasundo ba yung buong buong team how important was that family dynamic for for TNT I think it was huge for just our camaraderie knowing each other's backgrounds and you know, coach Trot was big on knowing each other's backgrounds in these uh, team buildings and getting to know each other better um, you know coach Josh said it best when you came to practice it wasn't like work you're excited to go to practice and, and see your teammates and and put in the work together. It was just like going to the playground and playing with your friends, even though practice would get, you know, competitive, but it, you're there with your brothers and just having fun playing basketball. It was, it was like some of the best times in, in my life. You know? Everybody was on the same page, you know, from day one, from day one, um, I think, it was like that from from Qatar, the Qatar trip, right? Going back to um, the desert, and uh, it, I'll tell you what, it was the best basketball I've ever been a part of ever in my entire career. I've said this quite a few times, ever since um, ever since my high school days, um, and I, 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 mean, I think Kelly mentioned it earlier. Rob mentioned earlier. I try my hardest not to go back and look at the video on YouTube, yeah. but as of late, I've been going back and looking <laughs> at it like, wow, man. I mean, it just really, it brings you back. It brings you back. You remember everything that took place before the game, um, during the game, after the game, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just, uh, it's something I'm always going to cherish for the rest of my life, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, some days it feels like it happened ages ago, but then some days it feels like it happened yesterday, you know? And, uh, Ali, I, even I those you. days when you arrive angry? Acting what? angry? <laughs> for late? For <laughs> late? Yeah, those days when you arrive angry. So you guys angry. couldn't get mad at me. Like, they, I'd come <laughs> exactly. in about 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, and I know that I'm in trouble. So <laughs> I tried to look the meanest I could possibly look. So you guys wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get any backlash. So no, it didn't yeah. work. It wouldn't work though. Hey, you know, hey, Carlo, <laughs> Carlo and Magu, we talked about Ronnie Dell never being late, you know, living the farthest and always being early. So that's the Ronnie Dell thing, being consistent. And in our team back then, there was thing called the peak factor. Yeah. And these guys are better suited to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not break, let us not break the relationships right now, guys. <laughs> uh, to your question about family, though, uh, it, I mean, it really was like, like I said, spending a lot of time as a reserve and just waiting for opportunities to 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 help. Like being able to bring my kids to practice, uh, that environment created, you know, where where our our families were a part of the family, and the kids knew when it was like, all right, this is serious time, and they would back off or we go up for film session, you'd come down and our kids would be playing together. The ball boys would get, be getting in the mix. Um, I mean, like I, I, I really cherish that um, knowing that I could be my kids to work with me and uh, knowing that they were in good hands with other, other players, children. And, um, <clears throat> and then also too, like, you know, Ranadel uh, had the, like such a loyal following of practice player guys who, who he, <laughs> And, and and I mean I I truly believe too that having been on a lot of teams the the energy and and effort brought by those practice team guys was a big part of TNT's success you know I, I would argue that during those eras Talking Text probably had the best lineup of practice players um, in the league you know got guys who could have gotten minutes on other teams were contributing making guys better. And 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 I found myself in that squad a couple times, and um, and and quite frankly, not only happy to be there, and uh, and it was just like the best working atmosphere um, that that you just can't recreate that, especially now that you know we're some of us are retired. Like, uh, there's really no replicating that in in outside of the playing world. You know, the games were awesome. The, the battles were awesome, but man, I, I don't know if I speak for everybody, but just the, the bonds and the, the grind of practice um, and TNT made that part of it extra special with, with a lot of things. But having our, having our families at practice was, 
was a part of that too. Guys, we're down to our final five minutes of this broadcast. Um, I just want to go around the room once again. Just final messages to your teammates, to the TNT Catropa faithful. Uh, let's start with Larry. Yeah. Um, once part of a TNT Catropa, uh, always a TNT by heart. Na. Um, <laughs> I'm going to forever cherish my time with you guys. I miss you guys so much. Unfortunately, ganito lang ang ganito muna mga reunion natin. Um, but, you know, um, it's such a special group. Special group. And uh, the stories will continue forever to my kids, to my current teammates right now. Um, wala. It's just a joy na to, to remember all these good memories with all these great people. Coach Josh? Yeah, this really a special group. It was a special group. Could be one of those uh, once in a lifetime uh, stuff. You know, it's hard to to compare it and recapture the magic. You know, Kelly, Kelly, Radidel, um, Harvey. You know, the guys who still who are still in uh, TNT right now. You know, it's you can't compare it. So you know, if you try to compare the times in the past, it, you'll you'll just get disappointed. So that's how special um, this group was. It, you, need to, you need a concerted effort to not compare what you have now to what we had before or else, you know, it, it, it would just be wrong to do. But that's how special each individual was. And, you know, with Ranidel announcing his retirement, you know, we just want to, we feel sad, of course, but we want to congratulate him. Salatang nagawa niya, salatang naitulong niya. And sana, mag-reunion. We, we need a real reunion after all of this is over. Kel? Yeah. yeah. Kelly? Yo. Um, yeah, like, like Coach said, I think that's one of the things that I've struggled with for the past several years now, uh, not being able to let go of how, you know, the, just the, the, the heights that we went to with, 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 with this squad, uh, with those squads. So, um, I'm definitely forever going to cherish uh, the, the bonds made, the lessons learned uh, in, in, in that time. Uh, and and I'm, just, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I could have been part of uh, such a special group and a special run and a team and uh, not even just the players, but the organization as a whole, uh, the way the team was ran, you know, the, the environment, the, the, the culture. It's, it's, it's something that I'd never experienced before and a level of, of, of brotherhood that I really have never experienced, period. That's on and off the court, you know? So uh, definitely special for me and um, looking forward to meeting up with all you guys. And it's great seeing you tonight. Ali. Oh, I just want to say uh, that, you know, again, best basketball I've ever played and ever been a part of. And I was very grateful to be a part of that. And, uh, man, um, I think Coach Josh is right. I think I think we need to have a actual physical reunion once the lockdown is over with. <laughs> hey, I, I, I miss it. You know, I, I really do. I miss um, I miss all of you guys. Uh, it was – it was just – it was a it was a run that was just so incredible for three years. And, uh, and then – Hey, Renadel, you know, I, man, when people ask me, because I, I, you know, I think you saw my post, I'm just going to be real quick about this. I think you saw my IG story. And a lot of my friends back home are sending me messages saying, hey, what kind of player was uh, your teammate? I said, hey, man, the guy can do everything. So what I mean, like, I mean, just, if you need him to knock down three-point shots, you can knock down three-point shots. He had every post move available like every post move known to mankind and i i just uh yeah I, I it was fun i what, you, what thank sticks you. out right now what sticks out right now is the high lows i don't know if you remember that we played against powerade in the finals i kept it was the high low i kept trying to feed you the ball as much as possible yeah in my mind i'm like man I, I'm, I'm worried he's gonna get tired but he never got tired killing the bigs of powerade <laughs> Thanks, Ali. We're down to our final couple of minutes. Uh, Harv? Uh, I'll just cherish, you know, this, this bond, this brotherhood that we've built over the years. Uh, I've learned so much from each and every one of you guys. I uh, appreciate you guys. I love you guys. 
Ronnie Dell, best of luck. I'm sure I'll be seeing you. Thank you. Soon. Send the love to the family. Thanks, Art. Hey, Adore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Trey. <laughs> Cap. Um, again, I, you know, I think a lot of the guys have already said it, but, uh, you know, special times with a very, very special group. Um, uh, these guys, these guys are my brothers for life. Um, you know, being, being four years removed from the game, um, and, and having a chance to look back just makes me appreciate these guys more, um, for what we went through on the court, off the court. Um, again, just a, a very, very special time. And, uh, I know memories, memories that, that, uh, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Um, love you guys. And, and to my guy, Ron and Dale, um, man, a lot of, a lot of special moments with talking text. Yeah. Always, always one of my favorite targets. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think people ever figured out how to stop us in a high ball screen. Um, and of course, of course, our experience <laughs> with the, with, with Gilas. Um, again, you, you know, always one of my, always one of my favorite targets. And, and like I said on Instagram earlier, I really feel like you revolutionized the, the the stretch four, especially here here in the Philippines. And uh, you know, love you, man. Love all you guys. Uh, Dell, uh, best of luck in this next uh, this next chapter. Only the only the beginning, though. Yeah. So so Carlo and Magoo, thanks for having us, man. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.